Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to, what is it? It's Wednesday. That's right. Losing track of days. We had an amazing end of month. What a fantastic uh, way to finish off the uh, first quarter of the new year. Can you imagine? We're already at the end of the first quarter. And these lives have been a huge part of this past month and a bit. And we're super excited that we continue on. So the beautiful Fee, and I can actually see Fee coming on here. I'm going to press. He's going to be wisdom to the mix today and that and for those of you who are still kind of wrapping up and kind of trying to wipe your brow and all the rest kind of thing after a huge end of month uh, and that it's um, it's time to start setting your goals for April yes I know we're already into April though now it says that it's adding 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 fee so here we go any minute now she's gonna pop on here and share her wisdom I can hear her there she is in the car <laughs> I am in the car, sadly. <laughs> uh, uh, it's good. We have been doing these from the sides of beaches by being blown out in airports, all sorts. This is what I love. We can do business and plug in anywhere at any time. I had grand plans today. We, um, I'm at Somerset College. We've got the Canadian Commonwealth Games athletics team training here right now. And wow. I had, I was down on the track. I was going to do this from the track, but it is so windy that I just, you wouldn't have been able to hear a thing. You would have been able to get some pretty good insight with the Canadians running around. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, unfortunately, the weather's not going to play nicely. So I can't give you that backdrop today. So you've got the car instead. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. We're just uh, we're just happy to have you, darling. Well, I'm actually glad at the moment it's a little bit quiet here because, to be honest, where um, earlier on today, I, I was in here probably just a little bit after seven. And I was getting stuck and I'm thinking, oh, I'll just go across the road and get a cuppa. And the heavens opened. It's been pouring on and off here for probably the last, I'd say, 12, 15 hours. So at the moment, it's nice and quiet. So we're ready to rock while it's quiet. <laughs> Beautiful. Good plan. I'm hoping it stays. I hope it stays. The sun stays out. We've got the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony here tonight. Oh, so um, right. yes. we are praying for good weather. So, well, yeah. we will put that up there. We will add our prayers to that one. Um, Thank that you. It's going to be exciting. So, Fee, what I've been starting off these calls with is, um, first of all, sharing how long have you been in Juice Plus and how long have you been a national marketing director? Seven years is the answer to the first one. I'm nearly up for long service. Um, <laughs> yep, wow. seven years and a national marketing director for just ticked over three years in January. Awesome. I love it. And I, I particularly get people to start off on that because, you know, especially new people have joined our business. They have no idea. Good morning, Davina, down in the beautiful ACT. Um, but, you know, oftentimes we, you know, to see the names and all the rest and um, no long, how long have people been in the business? And also to that journey. So your journey was four years to national marketing director. And um, so, yeah, so you've got to be a national marketing director the last the last three years. I love it. Yeah. Now, um, gosh, seven years. It seems shorter, but it seems longer. You know, it's kind of yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 seems, it seems shorter because I really didn't do very much for the first couple. Um, oh, I wasn't despite, going to say anything, but yeah, you're right. Dis you didn't. Despite, <laughs> despite Linda giving me everything I needed, um, I just, I was in denial, Slane. I was not in network marketing, no way, no one. Loved the product, 100% on the product and the company and the people, but the industry, I was a below 10 just was not going to have my name bandied around. It was minus, so I thought, actually. I think you were oh minus at one gosh. stage. Yes, it was like minus, minus 10. Minus 10. Going, oh, you know, and it was like, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. But it's a beautiful, I, I think, though, Fee, you're, a, you're an awesome example of um, somebody who you, because you were kind of that accidental leader then, because you had lots of contacts, you knew lots of people, um, you were in an industry um, and still are where, like, you know, you were having people that absolutely resonated with our products so that wasn't a, that was a kind of a given and even people who were looking for another opportunity or whatever but you know and you would just then work with Linda so it kind of happened and then I remember I remember I think that there was a, like a little bit of a light bulb moment to go hmm actually <laughs> <laughs> um, Danny Martin it's all Danny Martin's fault no I, I'm very blessed he came to the coast I'll never forget. Music. I'll never forget. Linda rang me and said, "I never ask you to come into anything, but can you please come to this one?" And I went, "Oh, what is it?" Um, <laughs> and literally by then, I think I was 
SSC, honestly, because I had been able to, to, you know, bring people in, but I had really still in denial. And I remember sitting in the car when I watched Christine walked in and Tina heard him watch it walked in and Dee walked in. All these people were going to go and see this American guy talk about Juice Plus. And I was just in the car just going, oh, damn it, they've seen me. I'm going to have to go in. And dragged myself in there, met Stevie Coulter, first, first time ever, and went, oh, okay, surf club, but we had lots to talk about. Yeah. Um, and then sat up the back of the room with my arms folded. I did not want to be there. I, didn't, I was not going to learn anything. And Danny Martin showed me the money and yeah. it was not the first time I'd seen it. Linda showed me a hundred times, but it was the first time it actually sunk in. And, um, I remember ringing Linda the next day or texting her just saying, can you get me a copy of that PowerPoint and sending it off to my accountant brother who just went, this is an awesome pay plan. What are you doing with it? And I just went, Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it could be actually, I think I can actually make money. Yeah. So yeah, very reluctant, very reluctant for the first couple of years. Yeah. So there's yeah. hope out there for all of you who have been reluctant for the last however, whether it's been a month, whether it's been a year, whether it's been two years or longer, there is hope for you. Just want to say. Yeah. So, yeah. Hang in there, guys. You just never yeah. know. <laughs> exactly. You just don't. You don't know what you're sitting on. So over that time then, I suppose, besides that at the beginning, kind of, you know, um, you know, that, that original time of not really knowing, I suppose, the pot of gold you actually had in your hands. Um, but since then, there have been many lessons along the way for you. And yep. uh, as there has been for, you know, for all of us as, we, as we've talked and we have definitely realised that over this past month. But what would you say are your top three lessons um, that you would love to share? Yeah, it's, it's coming towards the end of the, the month of, of having all these NMD calls. It's just been so much gold. So I guess probably my top three and, and looking at, at what everybody else has delivered as well. I want to try and reach in and, and give you a couple of other things. I guess probably, and it comes from Danny Martin again, his words to me that the view from the top is the same. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there. Yeah, so taking yeah. the pressure off the race, it's not a race. It's your own pace. And that was gold for me and has been important for me in leading my team as well. Like this, you might miss a fast track. That's okay. Life goes on and there's still many ways to get there. And I think probably the most important thing along that journey is the relationships. You've got to nurture relationships, um, plant seeds along that journey, no matter whether it's a fast one or a slow one, um, help your team to, to do the same and just really, um, you know, just be authentic and do this the way you want to do it. And I think that's probably been the biggest blessing. Um, and not just in my first few years, it continues to be a blessing um, to not just for me, but also for my team as well, just to remind them it's not a race. It's okay. Take yeah. the pressure off that. Yeah. So yeah, Absolutely. big one. And I, I think, and I want to kind of add to that, like it's, it's not a race, but set your pace, whatever that pace might be. Yeah. Pace. Yeah, and I was actually doing a coaching call yesterday with um, a lass who is um, an SSC. She actually happened to be, um, we turned it into a coaching call because she was the only person who had popped onto the SSC call. <laughs> and so it turned into a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. So um, she was happy about, well, we were actually talking about this very thing in that don't, I suppose, um, be real with yourself. So it is important that no matter what speed you want to go to, that there is some pace because we can kind of look sometimes as that you know like what we've just said there you know you, you said I love that quote the view from the top is the same doesn't matter how long we take to get there but I suppose at the end of the day it's deciding do you want to get there and again whatever pace set your own pace but make sure that there is a pace so that you yeah. are if it's if it's one say connection a day you're going to do that you do that every single day that you commit to making that happen if it's yep. 10 connection that you commit to making that happen so yep. it's making sure that you are putting the actions that match the pace you want to go and i think that's really important to sure. add in there yeah which, which leads me straight into my second point which hmm. is indecision is the thief of time yeah so yes go at your own pace but you need to decide what that looks like and exactly what you're saying. You know, you've got to decide on a goal. You've got to have something that you're working towards that it's, it's just, it, that's a non-negotiable. If, if you're here to build a business, you've got to treat it like a business. And it doesn't matter, as I say, if you're going hundred miles an hour or you're going 50 miles an hour, 
it just means that you can just keep putting one step in front of the other along that path that you've chosen for yourself and working towards those goals. So, um, yeah, definitely. I'm up for the quotes today, aren't I? Big I love it. I'm, just, I'm really liking that. Indecision is the thief of time. I'm loving that. Let's just say yep. hello to some people here because there's been yep. lots of hollers and, and all that kind of coming up. Hey, Fiona. Hey, Kate. Hey, Barbie. Hey, Stebbie. We're all over the place here, which is really cool. Jackie Davina. Jack. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. I can see Jenny and Jess and everyone's watching. So cool. So, yeah. So first off, the view from the top is the same. doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there. And the second one then was indecision is the thief of time. I love that again. Make the decision. Make the decision. You set your yep. pace, but then do something about it, which is which is awesome as well. Alrighty. Cool. Right. What's next? The the biggest one for me is customer care. Oh. Ah, jeez, um, <laughs> uh, guys, come on. Look after your customers. Um, we have a team mantra in Team Yolo down under to be a finder keeper. And yeah. that is find them and keep them. Look after them because, honestly, guys, really, um, apart from one or two, the majority of my front line have been customers first. They've yeah. had that product belief. They've seen the customer care. They've seen the companies looking after them. They've seen what we've been able to do, what they've been able to achieve on our products. So they've had that belief to come in with. Um, and if I didn't look after them, and if I wasn't good on my customer care, then they wouldn't have stayed. They just wouldn't yep. have. Um, and, you know, giving them that experience of amazing customer care, which we don't get from anyone, anywhere, anymore. I don't know about you guys, but I change service providers a lot based on customer care. Um, yep. You know, if we look after them, then build those relationships then they're not going to go anywhere. And you're going to have um, longevity with that customer or potentially a a team member and then going to them for referrals is not hard to do because they know that you're going to look after their friends and their family. Yes. I just love this. It's funny. I was doing some research yesterday. Some figures came through for the end of the month and um, I, I was actually looking at uh, refusals and 58% and there's only like a 0 0.05 difference between the New Zealand and Australia. 58% 50, of all refusals are that second shipment. They're actually yep. that second shipment. So in other words, people have brought them on. They're not being a finder keeper. They've brought them on, but then they've kind of just left them to their own devices. So I was doing yep. a little bit more research, and this morning I was reading an article. It's funny, I've still got it here on my computer um, to print out. But we've seen basically, and this is an industry article kind of thing, but it's research that's been done on many, many companies across the board in, within our industry. It's that basically 50 to 70% of all customers will actually leave because they haven't been given the service that they need to. Yeah. And if you were just to reduce your churn, in other words, look after your customers by only 1%, you would actually increase your sales by 5%. So just imagine what you were to do if each month you were to work on, how can I improve my customer service this month over last month? What is it that I could be doing that's a little bit different? And then next month the same, the next month the same. And See, we know, like when I mean, we've looked at the figures and, and um, I do, this is one thing I really do want to acknowledge um, for you because it's been something that you've been very passionate about with, from day one and you teach that within your team as well, looking after customers. You do customer appreciation days, you know, you definitely so into customers and we can see that through your team and through yourself, what you've actually done. But it's just it literally is the goal. We work so hard, if we think about it, to get that customer in the first instance because it's conversations yep. is all the rest. We get them in the door and then we sit and forget. That's it. Yeah, that's when the work thing. starts. That's mm. when the real work starts. You've got to look after them. And do you know, Slane, with the reships, um, honestly, I love it. I love getting, mm. I'd much rather see an R code on my reports than a cancellation. Absolutely. Yeah. But, those reshipments, I want to know why. Why those those re, you know, why are they delaying their reshipment date? What's going on? And to me, when I see them cropping up, that means customer care has gone down, because they wouldn't be delaying their shipment if they were taking their product. Exactly, and, talk, and that's talking about had, capsules. Um, Capture well, that's customers. Exactly right. We're doing spot checks at the moment, so I've got the cold customer service team, and they are doing. Um, each each person has a quota of, of, of minimum 10 calls a week that they're actually phoning out 
just yep. to see how how is the service? How are we actually yep. doing it? You know, are yep. they enjoying it? And it yep. is interesting. They're coming back to us with some of the feedback on that. Um, just so, again, we can help to, to grow and, and develop both internally and, of course, with our franchisees externally as well. And quite a number of them end up reshipping. Okay, so we basically delay because of the conversation. Yep. They delay. Um, but it's, as you say, it's much better a delay than a, than a cancellation. And more often than not, it's because they haven't actually properly got into the Juice Plus habit yet. That's right. They're not in the habit. So that's that's crap customer care as far as I'm concerned because you're not making sure that they've created the habit, um, not doing your follow-up, not checking in. And, yes, home office are amazing with the emails that go out to our customers and the customer portal that we now have. Gosh, we never had any of that back seven years ago. Um, nice. And I guess that's probably why – you know, it's been in, in built in me as to why we need to do great customer care. But, you know, if you've got customers who are delaying their shipment and you look on your reports and your team, this is becoming um, obviously a, a trend, then you've got a problem because if you don't fix it and they don't start taking their product, then they might delay shipment again or just cancel. Yeah. Um, and if they are, if it's trending for this reshipment, the other thing I think as leadership, we need to be watching too for all those on the call who are watching this is how is that reshipment coming about? Who is actually pressing the delay button? And is it because we haven't done good customer care? We don't want to have that conversation. So we're actually making that decision to delay their product and then go, oh, I'll call them next week. Actually, I'm just going to delay that a couple of weeks and then I'll call them and then I'll make sure, um, yep. you know, or is it the customer, like who's making the decision to delay the shipment? So it's something that we've really got to watch. As I said, I'm really grateful that we've got reships. I'd much rather that happen. But yeah. to me, when I see them creeping up, it's a question will start popping up. And if you look at your reports, you might see – the trend and where it is and you've got to be right on top of the non-active franchisees in your team as well so people who come in and just are there for their own product and mum and dad and the neighbor and whatever they're not looking at their virtual office not at all they wouldn't have a clue so it's it's making sure that on your customer gen report you're really keeping track of that as well I love that yeah. um, because, again, as a so especially for anybody on here who is, say, for example, an SDVF and above, you know, or even um, even an SDVF qualified business, because you know some of what is qualifying you could actually be your VFs or your DVS customers. So, are you, you know, if they are not active, it's a great point that they made there. If if they are not active, are you making sure that somebody is providing them a customer care? And the other thing too is that. What I know to be true, and I know this, you know, from my own time, you know, um, in the field and also, you know, chit-chatting with many of your great leaders, um, including Fee, customer care does not take that long to do. I mean, it should be just part of your DMO for the week, you know, so whether it be every Monday morning that, you know, you spend time, okay, going, right, who's reshipping in the next couple of weeks, okay, who do I need to give a birthday call to or whatever, like, if you know enough detail about your customers, they become not just customers, they become friends and potential franchisees and probably some of your best teamies along the way. But it starts with you actually putting the same value on a customer as you would on a teamie, okay? Yeah. Because they both are equally as important in the long term. Yes, a teamie can grow and bring more customers and more income in, I get that. However, if they're a customer first, the only way that you remember from the time you sign up a customer, you're actually training them as a franchisee because they're watching what you do, not what you say. So it actually becomes a lot easier for them to refer to you and decide to sign up if you've actually done a great job in, in training them um, on how to, you know, be a great customer and how to look after a customer as well. So I yeah, love those sure. points. I love them. Good, um, good. Have you got another minute? Because I just saw a question there and I would love for you to add some value it was just around what you do for customer appreciation days. And I know you've done all different types of them, yep. but what have you found have been the, the typical kind of format for that? Um, okay. We, we do two variations. So one, and Candy's running some of these at the moment. Um, we do a early morning workout in a local park and a brekkie in a jar. So everyone has to bring an ingredient to build and a jar to do brekkie in a jar and we make up, 
complete smoothies, of course. Um, and yeah, and we do that just locally. So that's, that's one way we've done it. The other mm-hmm. thing that we do, um, and it's only that we've outgrown our space and we need to find a new space, but last year we ran three customer retreat days. Mm. So um, the customer retreat days are amazing. Um, as a customer, they might pay $40 and a non-customer, someone we're introducing to the community, uh, they might pay 60 So there's their incentive straight away to become a customer. Um, and basically that the money goes towards um, the catering and the venue cost. So it's not a, you know, that's, it's basically a cost neutral for us. Um, yep. And what we do on those retreat days, and I'm very blessed with the, the team I've got because we're, we're full of health and well-being professionals and experts, we start with a stretch or a yoga in the morning. Yep. Uh, we follow that up with um, a smoothie demo and then they have their complete smoothie. We then do some mindset work. So it might be around goal setting um, or, you know, something along those lines of just, you know, writing down some plans for the year uh, or for the month or for wherever we are at that stage of the year. We do um, then do a raw food treat kind of demo where we show them, and this is all in our HLR booklets, especially the yep. new one that you're going to launch yep. pretty soon. Yeah, very soon. <laughs> um, very soon. Um, so that's all in there. Um, all the recipes are in there. So we're working through those and we'll just make up a few different ones. Um, and then we'll do, uh, we might do um, our salad in a jar next. So then it gives us a chance to talk about food prep, fl- flushing our bodies with good nutrition, um, basically just um, promoting everything that we're about and, and, you know, getting that good nutrition in. We do a salad in a jar, so the girls and I will chop everything up ready. Everyone brings a jar. They'll do make their salad in a jar and that's lunch. Yep. Then we're going to eat the raw treats for afternoon tea. So yep. it's kind of demo and, and eating along the way. And we usually finish with a meditation of some description. Um, so, you know, that's our format. And we go to this beautiful retreat up in the hills, not too far away, but just up on the hill. So we've got a serene space. And just women taking themselves, and it's the majority of women, out for the day. Um, and it's only you know, $50 and it's fully catered. Um, they're quite happy to, to, you know, come and do that. But also it's a, a way of us giving back to our community as well as exposing some potential customers into that as well. Um, and we'll, we do talk about the product. We do talk about Nutrition Plus. Um, we talk about, um, you know, how we all get involved with that as well so that they can see mm-hmm. it's not just a business. It's also yeah. the charity behind it. We talk about the Million Meals program so that we're kind of giving a complete overview of who Juice Plus really is. Yeah, awesome. Love it. And so and there's so many different variations. I know I've seen totally. um, I've seen uh, groups over in the West get together and they do yoga under the stars and have a bit of a smoothie thing afterwards yeah. and all sorts of things. So I think the thing is too that, you know, for those of you who are watching or thinking that might be something that you want to do, is just thinking about the point of view of going um, is just thinking, okay, how can we just add value and show people our community because I know that you said before, Fee, when we talked about this, there have been people that come along with customers and actually have, you know, decided to become franchisees because they've seen the beautiful community and that has resonated with them. So yeah, totally. And so, well, I'm mindful of your time. I know you've got an appointment to be at. So thank okay. you so much for the wisdom that you've shared this morning. Love that. Um, all of those things, indecision is the piece of time, customer care is a must, and the view from the top is the same. It doesn't matter how you get there, just get there at your Just get there. So, yeah, beautiful. Love it. Thank you so much, darling. Really Thanks for having you. me on, Celine. It's been an honour. Thank yeah, you. Right. God bless. Right. Bye. God bless. Bye now.